Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey. One. Good. Vibrations at your service to explain how a grounded antenna can work. A viewer asked me a very interesting question in regards to my video about large loop antennas where I directly grounded the side of the loop opposite the feed point and then claimed that the loop would still transmit or at least didn't say it wouldn't. And uh, the purpose of the ground was as it is here in this example a so-called random wire antenna at least one half wavelength long and at least one quarter of a wavelength above the effective ground. I'm not showing structural supports or anything like that. I'm just showing you, your radio, and the red is the radiating element of the random wire, which goes down to a ground rod with some radials so that you've got a solid DC ground here and also a solid RF ground here. Now, the viewer would ask, how can such an antenna possibly radiate anything? It's grounded. Uh, why do you ground it in the first place is a good question that he did not ask, but I had already explained that in the video. You do things like this to conduct electrostatic charge buildup, particularly on long wire antennas, away from you and your radio and preferably if there's a thunder shower anywhere nearby you don't even have this wire connected to your radio you either leave it dangling or you ground it somewhere a good distance from your house so that if lightning should even if lightning should actually strike the antenna it would be likely to conduct to the distant ground away from your pride and joy in life's investment and away from you. But how could such an antenna radiate anything was the question because it's grounded. And the answer lies in the fact that the length is considerable in terms of radio frequency wavelengths. But of course for DC the entire length of the element is solidly connected to ground. But that's not so for, for RF. If it's solidly grounded for RF here, then a quarter of a wavelength from that point, it will have a very high impedance. You will have a current loop here, a current node here, a voltage loop here, and a voltage node here. Um, node meaning low or zero and loop meaning maximum. Uh, if it's longer than a half a wavelength and particularly if it's a very long wire antenna you're going to have several loops and nodes of current and voltage between you and the distant ground. And in effect you're going to have an image under the effective ground that's like a mirror image of this radiating element. It goes too far down for me to effectively draw it here on the screen, but you would end up really in, in effect with a loop antenna and it happens to be grounded at the far end. And uh, so what you're going to have is plenty of radiation at radio frequencies from this antenna despite the fact that the far end is grounded. If you remove that ground and just left this far end free, it would still radiate, but all the current loops would turn into nodes, and all of the current nodes would turn into loops. But the thing would still work just about the same for your radio, whether it's grounded or not. But there'd be a huge difference when it came to electrostatic charge. First of all, Electrostatic charge cannot build up on a solidly DC grounded piece of wire. But it can if you disconnect this right here from the ground. It sure can. If lightning strikes nearby and sets up a powerful current in this wire, that current can radiate right down to you and your radio if this is not connected to ground. 
but if it's grounded chances are much better that it will radiate away f that it will conduct away from your radio and be done away with at this earth ground and again a number of radials is very important here they don't have to be resonant at the operating frequency but the longer and the more that you can make them the better off you're going to be so that is why I hope I've explained how and why a, an antenna that's grounded for DC can still work fine for RF provided that it's long enough at least well even a quarter of a wavelength wire would work all right but I'm talking more along the lines of the venerable straight long wire that so many ham radio operators wish they had but lack the real estate to have. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, signing off for now, saying 73, which means best regards, and so long, which, in my native fist, comes out as da-da-da-da-da-da.